Let's resume. We had discussion regarding item 8. Moving on to item 9. Inclusion of other minor or technical amendments. Mr. Yu. Uh, if uh, the election is resumed within 14 days, let's say it's a black rainstorm, two hours. So within f uh, uh, the voting will have to continue, we'll have to resume within 14 days. So it's a full day. Is it? Will it? Mr. Lee? Uh, the law, the legislation says so that uh, the voting time loss has to be recovered. So if uh, three hours was lost, then you have to compensate at least three hours. But you can compensate more than three hours, so it depends on actual situations. So let's say by 4 p.m., there's a black storm. It's raining cats and dogs, plus uh, flooding in many areas. So within 14 days, how much time will you compensate? So if uh, the uh, election is postponed at f uh, 4 p.m., then six and a half hours is lost. Then let's say uh, next Sunday the election is continued. Then the law requires you have to compensate at least six and a half hours. But uh, the EAC has discretion. They can compensate more than six and a half hours. So, in other words, you can compensate a whole day or more than half a day. So, when the date is fixed, so they resume. Can they resume uh, voting at 4 p.m. again? Well, is that, isn't that too flexible? Well, it should be clear. Uh, you should just uh, compensate the, the voting time loss. Uh, well, if it's uh, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., there's a black rainstorm. So well, we have a principle. So we, uh, the so the voting uh, would be suspended for the rest of the day. So uh, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., that's very clear. But let's say the black rainstorm is from 4 to 7 p.m. You suspend that and then you resume. So, the people who wanted to vote between 4 and 7 can't vote. So, within 14 days, let's say the next Sunday, from you allow voting from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. again. Uh, because some people, because of working hours, they couldn't vote, or they, had, they could only vote between 4 and 7. That would be fair. They can be given back the voting time that was lost. Uh, but if you say that uh, there was a black rainstorm from 4 to 7 p.m. and you give it a few extra hours, will that be lead to controversy? Well, only three hours was lost, so why were you given uh, a few extra hours? It would, was it because some political parties didn't have sufficient votes? So when voting resumed within 14 days, the, uh, previously the outcome might have been very clear. Then if, uh, uh, if uh, a few extra hours were given, then the losing candidate might uh, find the resources to make a comeback. Yes, I understand his suggestion. The spirit uh, of the law is to ensure the voting time loss would be compensated on the next occasion. Well, the scenarios are very uh, multiple. If it's the legislation is too tight, there's no f discretion. The EAC has to make reference to the conditions at the time, uh, and uh, political th considerations are definitely not th uh, the criteria. If 
the uh, if you compensate exactly or a little bit more, it's uh, fair uh, because you can ensure sufficient time to vote if they hadn't voted uh, on the uh, black rainstorm day. So I feel the authorities should be given a bit more discretion. I'd also like to follow up, Mr. Yu. Uh, the scenario Mr. Yu referred to would that exist? You suspend vote from five to seven, but continue at seven. Will you? You don't. You won't uh, be given a different time slot uh, to vote. So within the fourteen days, you should find a time slot. Uh, for the time that was lost, the arrangement should be if a, a scenario occurred that would affect the voting, then the voting would be suspended and another date would be identified to uh, resume voting. I cannot imagine that uh, it, it was stopped and then resumed and uh, leading to confusion. Well, uh, the voting should be stopped. Another date should be announced for resuming the voting. Ms. Sid Ho, our colleagues had updated me on what had been discussed. Well, stopping and resuming voting is quite is controversial. On Hong Kong Island, there were insufficient uh, poll boxes. So mid-levels Yinghua was uh, suspended back in '04, and uh, the election, uh, uh, the losing candidate lost by a few hundred votes, so it was very controversial. On Cornhill, I think it was, uh, there was an electricity blackout, and uh, uh, an extra half hour was given uh, till 11 o'clock, but I can't remember when the blackout happened. If you tell the voters it will be, ex voting will be extended by half an hour, but for black rainstorms, if there are three hours of rainstorm, and then if you resume voting, then If it should resume on a Sunday, well, just now Mr. Lee already res uh, responded. Is my understanding correct? He said it would be uh, discretionary. It, it might be more uh, more than three hours. So the details need to you need to give us the details. No, I don't think you can resume after three hours. It's, you should identify another date. Well, if it's a black rainstorm, it will stop the whole day. No, they have to confirm. Let's have Mr. Lee respond. The mechanism under the legislation refers to major incidents affecting the whole polling and counting. Let's say on uh, the voting day uh, an incident occurred according to the law will suspend the voting and will announce another date to resume voting just now uh, you referred to uh, Cornhill in 08 that was different the poll station uh, they had electricity blackout for some 20 odd minutes the polling station was open. Uh, voting continued, but uh, a lot of work didn't require electricity. So the EAC, according to the EAC ordinance uh, clause four, they can make some appropriate arrangements. The arrangement at the time was that there was electricity blackout. 
So that whole station extended uh, some 20 odd 30 minutes uh, as compensation. So if uh, a whole day is suspended from 3 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. So how are the polls kept? How is the reg voter registration kept? And the public survey, we have the poll survey. As colleagues said, if people had uh, conducted exit polls, uh, do you stop uh, lobbying or do you allow c lobbying to continue? And university polls, uh, they already voted halfway. So you can't stop the uh, people from asking wh who you voted for. So you can't rule out that they might have conducted an exit poll. So when you suspend and resume do you prohibit uh, surveys? I don't think there is legislation regulating poll surveys. If you're referring to surveys outside the poll station, our guidelines state that uh, the poll, the election has not been announced. They cannot announce the results. That is very clear, and. Uh, the relevant organization has to sign a uh, document, so it should not affect the uh, voting outcome. Well, voters are very smart. They either don't answer or they give wrong answers. The public uh, engage in these sorts of activities. But the law needs to be clear if you have uh, voting stopped and resumed a week later. Then how do you seal the boxes? How do you handle the voter registration list? Uh, would you store the list? I hope the administration can give us a detailed response. For example, when such an incident occurs and the election is postponed, the procedures are already uh, in place uh, under the legislation. So when uh, 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 voting is suspended, the poll station officer has to handle all the uh, ballot boxes, the used and unused. Uh, ballots and he has to store them. Uh, it has to be stored with the uh, presiding officer and they need to store it in a safe and secure location. Would you? And if that can't be done, then um, the, uh, the um, items should be stored at a nearby police um, station or um, a public building. So in other words, um, um, the items must be stored at a safe and secure place. Um, yes, Chairman, uh, of course we hope these things um, will not happen. Now, uh, because if these things do happen, and the um, 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 difference in the number of votes between the winning candidate and the losing candidate is um, uh, very small, then um, there may be disputes. Yes, you uh, mentioned uh, a police station or or a. Um, Public building. I think it's important that there is transparency. In other words, um, say the uh, ballot boxes, everything um, should be stored. Uh, say, um, say in a room with um, glass panels instead of um, in um, a securely locked room uh, um, where no one can see what is happening inside. I think transparency is very important. No, oh, uh, I think um, tampering with um, ballot boxes, ballot papers is a very serious criminal offence.
I think um um uh, um they are proficient in the law to make sure that um the items will be um are kept securely uh, and safely um during the suspension. Uh, I think um, uh, from the time the um, um, polling is suspended till um, it is resumed, I think. Um, uh, uh, now, and uh, I say if um, the um, uh, uh, polling is closed for certain hours, then uh, I think um, when you um, compensate the the lost hours. Um, uh, that there should be some guidelines to go by. Although I can accept a little bit of flexibility. Now, say for example, you um you you decide that that um from four p.m. onwards, uh, voting um um could no longer take place, and as uh, as as a result, you decided to compensate the voters um um eight hours, and then you st uh, decided to start uh say at, at seven a.m. the following Sunday. That that would not be be good. I think you should. Start counting the eight hours from four p.m. Now this is because some people can only cast their votes during certain hours in the day, and some can only um, cast their votes at other hours because they have to go to work or they have other reasons. So, uh, yes, I can accept some flexibility, but please do not think it's enough to just uh, compensate the voters uh, for the uh, number of hours um, lost. You also have to consider um, at what time um, the uh, uh, voting um, uh, should take place. Uh, yes, do you understand? Uh, I think you are talking about um, um, broadly the same hours and broadly the same number of hours. Right, so let's move on to item 9, Ms. Chong. Uh, yes, Chairman, this is uh, in fact Annex C. These are minor and technical um, uh, amendments. Now, uh, for the um, textual uh, amendments, I think uh, we can deal with them when we um, uh, um, uh, arrive at the clause-by-clause uh, -clause scrutiny stage. Now, first of all, the definition of um, a normal working hours. Uh, we want to um, uh, clarify that, in fact, it should be... Uh, uh, nine to five, and then nine to twelve um, during um, on Saturday. And now we we want to specify that we are uh, here specifically talking about the um, election period. And then item two uh, concerning um, specified um, 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 uh, stations and so on and so forth. Now, um, the um, returning officers need to um, provide notices on the various types of stations, and we now to um, specify that it should be the tenth day or, or before, uh, counting from the day of the uh, election. And then it is said that the chief electoral officer can designate some special uh, polling stations uh, for disabled voters to cast their votes. But then it doesn't say that um, the arrangement should be um, published by uh, notice in the Gazette. And, and that's uh, so we, we are trying to make this clear. And then. Now, there is a notice given to um, candidates on the um, place for counting the votes, and it says um, that the notice should be given uh, one day before the um, polling day. But then uh, we want to clarify that, in fact, it's um, the 10th day uh, before polling day or uh, before, or in other words, at least 10 days before polling day. And then... Uh, sometimes there are applications um, 
to the chief electoral officer uh, from candidates, and then there may be certain notices between the chief electoral officer uh, or the uh, ROs and candidates, and we are uh, saying that transmission by electronic mail as a means of delivery is acceptable. And then there um, uh, is the electronic transactions exclusion order. The uh, REO will be providing a new electronic platform from January next year onwards uh, for receiving electronic submission of e certain electro documents and the digital signatures uh, 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 will also be accepted. For example, appointment of election agents or um, a notice to appoint certain election expenses agents. And as we're going to have this electronic platform, Uh, we want to uh, remove certain items from the electronic transactions exclusion order. And then E to G in Annex C, um, these are um, amendments to the wording, and I think uh, we'll um, go back to them when we uh, reach the clause-by-clause -clause scrutiny stage. All right, uh, do members have any um, questions for the administration, for the PAS? No? Then uh, let's now move on to B, extending the claims and objections period during a VR cycle and setting aside additional time for the revising officer to arrange hearings of claims and objections. Um, yes, the uh, PAS, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Now, uh, uh, apart from the technical amendments, we have um, two amendments proposed for uh, voter registration. The first concerning the um, statutory um, deadline for voter registration that will be advanced by 14 days and as a result, um, there will be 10 more days for the public to um, um, check the uh, provisional register and then the uh, also the omissions list. And then uh, there will be more time for the um, uh, revising officer to arrange, uh, to uh, study the claims and objections and arrange hearings. And then next concerning making false or incorrect statement uh, knowingly or recklessly in voter registration, uh, we are, we're proposing to make the offence indictable. At the moment, it can be dealt with by um, summary procedures. This is to um, extend the prosecution um, time limit so as to achieve a better deterrent effect. And I would like to... Uh, uh, propose um, a, an, an amendment or a correction to the legal brief, para 19. Uh, and then that's page 9 of the Chinese version. And um, it says, at present, there are two different sets of offences related to V. Oh, they are respectively under the uh, EAC regulations in CAP 541A and CAP 541 and section 42 of the ECICO and I think the words section 42 should be deleted and the English version should also be amended uh, accordingly and then may I refer to Annex D uh, of the electrical brief there is a table there and um, uh, it, uh, the, the Annex contains proposed amendments to the voter registration statutory deadlines and it says that um, there is um, a, a statutory deadline for the public to make an objection or to make a claim. And uh, we propose to uh, change the statutory deadline from June 29th and August 29th to June 25th. 5th and August 25th, respectively. I want to say that um, the English version is correct, but then the amendment is not reflected in the Chinese version. And this is, uh, in fact, item 5 on the list. Are you talking about NXT? Yes, D for dog, NXT, item 5. Uh, it should be uh, under proposed, it should be 25th of June and also 25th of August. The English version is correct. There is no need to amend the English version, but the Chinese version needs to be amended. Right, I think that's um, a, a typo, perhaps. Um, Mr. Yu Wing. Yes. thank you. Bracket C. 
making the existing offences or making false or incorrect statement knowingly or recklessly in voter registration in Daitabo. Now, Chairman, now, in fact, there are people who uh, help elderly citizens uh, register as voters. You know, there are some um, elderly citizens who are uh, illiterate and um, the volunteers... Um, um, fill in all the information for them and then the elderly uh, citizens um, um, sign and then uh, uh, some of the volunteers may knowingly or, or not knowingly um, fill in the um, fill in wrong addresses uh, for the elderly citizens and then um, uh, and then um, the, uh, these other citizens may be accused of uh, vote rigging, but then they are illiterate. They and they can't get hold of um, um, the persons who filled in the forms for them. So what what, what should they do, Mister Lee? I think Mister Yu is saying that um, addresses appearing on the uh, register uh, may be wrong because of certain reasons. Um, Maybe um, the um, voters or the volunteers um, uh, filled in wrong information. Um, and that would not amount to making false or incorrect statement knowingly or recklessly. We merely want to help the voters uh, correct the information in the register. That, in fact, vote rigging is a very serious allegation. And we, we don't think um, just um, filling in um, incorrect information would amount to uh, vote rigging. We basically look at whether that um, the persons concerned provide false or incorrect uh, information knowingly or recklessly. Chairman, then is it that um, misleading um, the, the, the uh, elderly citizens uh, will not be an offence, but then the elderly citizens may be um, caught. Um, they they, um, um, they may not be prosecuted um, ultimately, but then um, I'm, I'm sure they, they will feel very frightened and shocked. But uh, maybe it's still possible to trace who or which political party um, filled in a form uh, for the elderly citizen and, and maybe a political party um, deliberately um, um, fills in uh, um, some false or incorrect uh, information concerning, address, concerning the address for the elderly citizen. So is it an offence to mislead um, the voters? Uh, Chairman, it depends on the circumstances of the case. If... Um, now, if a voter has signed on the uh, registration form, then of course um, it is um, um, making a statement that the information is um, true and correct. So I want to say that making a uh, false or incorrect statement knowingly or recklessly is a very serious allegation or offence. And so I, I don't think um, members of the public need not be, need to be too worried. Um, they will um, fall under this um, definition if they deliberately provide a false address. Uh, if they just fill in uh, incorrect information, that should not um, amount to this offence. Well, the person signing has to bear responsibility, but uh, the person assisting uh, the, uh, the senior citizen who can identify so and so uh, had helped him fill out the form, and let's say it was discovered uh, it was a deliberate act. He filled out a few forms with the same address. So would that person be indictable? Legal advisor, uh, Mr. Yu Siring. Uh, what he described is already uh, an offense. For example, in district elections, in district uh, council elections, Clause 22, there's a clause saying if any person 
directly or indirectly uh, threaten or coerce or encourage a person to make a false representation that is already an offense. So this amendment also seeks to make this an indictable offense. My understanding is that as Mr. Yu Siwing described, a deliberate act is an offense. But if you say uh, an elderly person needs certain people's assistance, that's their decision. So uh, it's a judgment call. Uh, but if you deliberately do something and uh, commit a criminal activity, that's uh, very clear. Any response? No. If we don't have further follow up, we had dealt with uh, a few points the government highlighted. Do we have any other discussions? If not, then I'm ready to enter clause by clause scrutiny. Well, there are not, of, not a lot of amendments, but it's miscellaneous items. And we do have uh, uh, rather a lot of amendments, so we need sufficient time. Any questions? So some matters can be dealt with through clause-by-clause -clause scrutiny. I also have another consideration. It's already 31st of May. And the legislative year ends at 9th of July. Uh, and I'm aware that this bill uh, we do not necessarily need to complete it uh, within this legislative year. But in 2015, there are district elections, so if we can have clear legislation, it's good for all candidates. So I'm considering that, if possible, I might try to complete the scrutiny within this legislative year because we have a very uh, clear uh, uh, progress. There are also other controversial bills, so the stamp duty bill, the marriage bill. So if our bill can be completed by 2nd of July, of course, uh, it's not mandatory but I would like uh, to make good use of time. Oh, okay, if we have no problems, we will enter clause by clause scrutiny. Sid Ho. Well, our questions, uh, we need to have written responses two days prior to the meeting. I would not like to have questions, but no responses. So we need to clarify with the government officials. Well, we see that they have a response after each meeting uh, on time. They need to provide it on time. They cannot just table it or give it a day ahead. Uh, each response uh, well, we've had two meetings I'm just stating in advance but we also need to take account of the facts in other bills uh, the documents are, are late they are holding up uh, the scrutiny uh, I'm just stating that up till now, they have been very timely. 
So we now enter clause by clause scrutiny. Uh, let's look at part one of contents. Short title and commencement. Ms. Jong, uh, I'll start with part one of the bill. We have the short title and commencement. In commencement date, we have two parts. In part five, subsection five, the ERO. We'll have an electronic system to ha handle election-related documents, and we say that this will take effect on 1st of January 2015. So aside from that part, the effect date will take effect from a Gazette date. You can refer to C618. Any questions? Including the uh, one, two, and three commencement date being first January twenty fifteen. Okay. Let's refer to document CB one five oh eight thirteen fourteen bracket oh one. That will help us. Let's refer to page one. Uh, amendments due to inclement weather. Ms. Jong. Part two is about uh, inclement weather. We have 13 regulations and procedures that will be amended and we have an automatic uh, extension of the date in general. If we have a gale warning or a black rainstorm warning and if uh, on that working day the date will be extended to the next uh, day without a gale warning or inclement weather warning. There are 13 regulations and they are very similar so perhaps let me deal with one as an example so we can look at part two cap 541 1A amendment so we would include 2A and we have uh, stated some concepts that would be used. We can look at the definition for inclement weather warning day. This means a working day on which a gale warning or a rainstorm warning is in force at any time during the ordinary business hours of the office. That would be an inclement weather warning day. Well, Ms. Jung is on page two already. So our legal advisor, you can jump in when, whenever uh, you need to. So, Ms. Jung can um, lead us through this, and legislators can jump in whenever you wish. In the definitions, after we've uh, made the definitions, in 
sub-clauses 2 and 3, we've included our legislation. In subsection 2, we have dates. And in subsection 3, uh, during a period and the last day of the period, uh, we have made some regulations. So let's take a look at uh, subclause 2. Uh, so if a date is prescribed, it could be a specific day of a specific month, or we could use uh, other methods to determine the date. For example, an act uh, after, after uh, 30 days after a certain act that can be determined. So, so dates can be specified under the subclause, and if we uh, encounter a inclement weather working day, then the deadline could be extended to the next working day. Subsection three is similar. Any questions? Legal advisor regarding subsection two. We had some discussions with the uh, DOJ uh, draft uh, law drafting uh, team. So it's just wording. Could you, legal advisor, could you tell us uh, in two A? A date is prescribed in this regulation, and uh, there's also a bracket otherwise ascertainable under this regulation. So the legal advisor is working with a draftsman to uh, clarify the wording. Ms. Jung, do you have any questions? It's not just a, a drafting issue. In one, it refers to a working day uh, being a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, other than a general holiday. And then we'll. So. If we have extension of 14 days, then it won't be a Sunday, because we have our elections on Sunday. It has to be handled within 14 days. Ms. Chung, could you explain? Here, Ms. Jung is referring to uh, a, a postponement or of a, an election. So if there's a uh, postponement, then within 14 days, the election has to resume. We're not talking about working days. We're just talking about days. Within 14 days, uh, voters have to be notified. Uh, I have say uh, if it's a Saturday, then um, the um, election must be held um, um, uh, to uh, um uh, uh, the latest two Sundays from that Sunday, so um and, and also on one. Uh, the uh, rainstorm warning. Uh, do you differentiate between uh, a black rainstorm warning, a red rainstorm warning, and an amber rainstorm warning? Yes, uh, let me explain. The definition of rainstorm warning uh, in this bill um, has the same meaning as uh, that in the uh, judicial proceedings, the German drink gale warnings ordinance. And uh, in fact, according to the letter, uh, this is uh, in fact referring to a black rainstorm warning. So do you think uh, you need to specify that it should be a black rainstorm warning? But then the reference is made to another ordinance. And in that ordinance, um, a rainstorm warning means a black rainstorm warning. So it's the black rainstorm warning, not the red rainstorm warning, not the amber rainstorm warning. Is that right, Ms. Chong? So it's only the black rainstorm warning. Yes, that um, ordinance states very clearly that um, the rainstorm warning means the black rainstorm warning. Yes, um, 
miss it whole. Yes, may I refer to the blue bill? I sent the legal advisor for having pointed out the problem of 2C. Oh, it's 2A. Uh, I think there is um, some difference. Uh, between the uh, Chinese and the English versions, they do not really tally. Um, because um, um, the drafting in the Chinese version and the English version is different. Can the um, legal advisor explain? And in the Chinese, in the English version, the uh, words in the bracket cannot be seen. Uh, legal advisor, in fact, this is um, an issue that we are taking up with the dr um, drafting division. Why is it that the um, words within brackets are necessary? And uh, after we've um, uh, completed our discussion with the drafting division, we'll report back to members. Can the uh, drafting division now explain to us why? Uh, it says in relation to the act instead for the provision, um, the last few words, there is this concept of instead. So although the um, provision um, prescribes a certain date, um, then because of the inclement weather, that's um, um, postponed for uh, one day. And so the word instead uh, means that this is the replacement uh, working day. In other words, the working day when there is um, um, no um, inclement weather. Uh, in English, we can just use the word instead to convey this concept. But then in Chinese, we need um, some more words to um, Explain that in fact it's not the original date, but rather the replacement date. That's why um, there are the words within brackets, and this is in fact to uh, echo the um, um, the, the um, concept of instead in the English version. Um, but I, I don't think I, I uh, can. Um, uh, f uh, fully understand um, this um, way of drafting. Perhaps um, um, the legal advisor can try to uh, find a, a better um, um, way of drafting this. All right, I'm strong. Let's go to um, three. So, if um, certain procedures have to um, um, be um, carry out um, during a certain period, and then the the last day of the period falls on an inclement weather warning day. Then that period is extended um, to end on the next working day, which is not an inclement weather warning day. All right, I think that's clear. Four, Miss Chong. Members, uh, I believe, can see the tables. Table 1, column 1, uh, contains the dates, they are deadlines. And then column 2, uh, in fact, uh, refers to the same dates. But then uh, when the dates are under column 2, they are not deadlines. In fact, we are seeking to uh, peg the date under the dates under column two to the deadlines under column one. So, in other words, if um, there is inclement weather and the um, deadline in column one has to be um, put back, then the date under column two uh, also needs to be put back. Now, for example, section four one a one. In fact, uh, it uh, refers to the sixteenth of July, and that's the um, deadline for applying to um, register as a voter. And then there is the seventeen bracket nine bracket a bracket one. It says if 
um, after the 16th of July and before the 29th of August, um, people want to um, change the um, uh, information in the register, they can do so. So uh, when um, the 16th of July is mentioned under column 2, it's not a deadline. In fact, it's a period, 7, uh, 16th of July to um, 29th of August. And so we need to pick um, this date to the deadline uh, under column 1. In other words, if the deadline is put back, then the date uh, for the period will also be put back, the starting date in this case. All right, any questions? Uh, this is to uh, make sure that we can um, also put back the date under column 2. All right, uh, 5, 6, and 7. Chairman, I think five uh, subsections 5, 6, and 7 can be looked at together. In fact, the purpose is the same. Uh, may I refer members to table 2, column 1, uh, you have um, the dates and they are deadlines. And then under column 2, the, the dates are the um, the day following the date in column 1. Let me give an example. Column 1, section 41A1, 16th July. That's the deadline for applying to be registered as a voter. And then column 2, section 12C2B1. And and this, this the date is 17th of July. That was the day following um, the 16th of July. And so... If um, um, the date under column 1 is put back because of inclement weather, then the uh, date under column 2 should be uh, the day following the um, day that um, has been put back. So here we're talking about district council elections. And next, uh, uh, page 5, um, Division 3, let's go uh, functional constituencies, um, and then election committee subsectors, and then um, election committee elections. And I understand that the content um, is the same. Um, um, uh, can uh, our legal advisor confirm this point? Yes, basically, it's the same, um, uh, except um, uh, references um, under subsection 4 and subsection 5. You mean the numbers? Um, because the, the numbers are different because, um, uh, um, um, because we're talking about different sections, but then the purpose is the same, Ms. Chong. Yes, I can also confirm that... Um, The um, objective um, is the same. In other words, to pack the dates under column 2 to the corresponding dates under column 1. All right, any questions? No? Then I think we've um, dealt with um, pages 6 and 7 already. Uh, Chairman, uh, may I supplement? And there is a... Um, subsection eight five four cap five four one b is about functional constituencies and also election committee subsector the uh, voter registration procedures and as stated in the paper we we are mainly working on um electoral elections district council elections and um uh, rural representative elections, and so we haven't included the CE election. And so concerning the register of the election committee and the um, uh, omissions list, we, we haven't dealt with um, those on this occasion. So that's subsection 8. Ms. Ho, um, uh, why is it that you're not dealing with that? Or is it that um, there are, are no omissions um, in those categories. Uh, we'll deal with those when we um, uh, have amendments to the um, 
um, uh, legislation on the uh, 2017 CE election, right? So I just want to remind the administration that even if we can't have the political reforms, we still have to um, um, amend the um, um, the legislation. All right. All right. Any questions? No. Then well, now on page eight of the um, Chinese version. And that's division four. Amendments to the EAC electoral procedure electrical regulation. Ms. Chong, is it that? Um, um, this is the same as um, the uh, provisions for the district council elections. Uh, uh, similar, Chairman. Members can see that concerning 1, 2, and 3, um, they are s um, similar to, the, uh, the, to those in the previous divisions. But then concerning... Um, adjournment and postponement at the moment um, there is a provision um, already uh, and so here it says that if there is a gale warning or a black rainstorm warning then the automatic um, postponement um, by one day or for one day will not um, apply. So this is subsection 4 seeks to um, clarify this situation. Ms. Chang, so, so what's the difference? It says that uh, um, this is um, um, uh, uh, somewhat different um, from the previous uh, subsection. Uh, what's the difference? Yes, Ms. Chong, please. Yes, let me go into a bit more detail. Now, um, now um, just now we said that the EAC would decide um, in the case of a postponement or an adjournment uh, when the um, election would resume, and that would that must be within 14 days. That, but uh, And here we're talking about... Um, um, uh, here we're talking about a gale or black rainstorm warning and the um, 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 postponement um, to the following day uh, or the following working day. So it's just to put things beyond doubt here. So I wish to... Um, uh, uh, clarify, uh, uh, and that is concerning the EAC's um, decision that will apply to uh, the, the, uh, the EAC elections or, or, or what? Go, go, go. So, what does the EAC regulate? So you're saying the future electoral uh, elections will have to comply with these uh, regulations. Ms. Chung, let me clarify. In our legislation regarding extension or postponement, there's already legislation. It states clearly that if these situations arise, the EAC will identify a date within 14 days to resume the election. And the bill on this occasion, we have added uh, subpart four. We want to uh, amend CAP 541 sub-legislation B. This uh, deals with LegCo election procedures, and these uh, involve different deadlines. So we want these deadlines uh, regarding... Uh, gale warnings or inclement weather, we want to uh, postpone it to one wor working day. So subclause 4 states that under the same regulations, there are specific legislation regarding uh, the extension or postponement of an election. So we just want to say that this addition will not affect the 
previously uh, made arrangements. So there's no conflict. Okay. So the LegCo uh, already has this 14-day uh, deadline. So we are just standardizing this uh, across the board. I think we're on page, page 9, uh, 4. The wording is very similar, I just want to clarify that. So I see in the addition 2A4, you refer to inclement weather, but uh, previously it refers to uh, inclement versus adverse weather. So what's the difference? In an inclement weather warning day, there's a definition, and as I said just now, the subclause 4 refers to uh, what happens in inclement weather. So in 541 cap B uh, extension or postponement, they have specific provisions. They refer to typhoon or other uh, inclement weather. So, and they say adverse weather, it's a generic term to other inclement weather. Well, you have to explain what the difference between inclement and adverse. You have an extra term now. <laughs> You have an extra Chinese term, but low. So uh, are you covering a wider spectrum or a narrower spectrum? And you don't have a definition. Well, you have definition for gale warning, inclement weather, but not for adverse. Well, there was a deliberate... Uh, differentiation between inclement and adverse. In inclement weather, uh, within a working day, working hours, there's a typhoon or black rainstorm warning. So we have uh, defined it as inclement weather warning day. But the whole 2A is a general clause. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, this provision can be used in a lot of times, dates, and deadlines. As Ms. Chung said, we had some provisions uh, where there's a, a handling of uh, a, uh, 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 handling the election during adverse weather for example, postponing a day or within 14 days. So, so when there's a, and it seems like a contradiction, when we have specific arrangement, this that will override the, the general provisions. But I went when I when I need to describe those provisions, I cannot use uh, the term inclement weather because. It already has a definition, Black Storm or uh, Typhoon 8. So we use the term adverse weather. It does not need a definition because it is to help you differentiate where we have provisions that are not affected. This is to help you uh, understand it. Well, if you look at the provisions, if they f f fulfill this description, uh, it helps. Uh, so we have uh, the specific provisions that are not affected by these uh, general provisions. We're very fortunate to have Mr. Gilbert Moe. So, uh, when his uh, junior colleagues 
uh, uh, read this, they would understand that uh, it covers the same inclement weather, but adverse are a separate group and inclement are uh, uh, these amendments. So you need to clarify somewhere. Mr. Mo? Of course, uh, we can have different considerations. Technically, this provision will clearly regulate uh, the specific provisions, uh, arrangements. It will continue to, to work under the specific provisions rather than the general provisions. But if you wish to have it further clarified, we can see, we can look into how it can be described. But we need to clearly say that those have to override these general provisions. But uh, when we draft these, we uh, there are benefits and uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to uh, general and specific uh, provisions. Well, we are fortunate to have the draftsmen here to explain it to us. But other people, when they read the law, who do they turn to for explanation? You need to state it clearly somewhere. So I would suggest, first of all, the draftsmen uh, provide a document. Because even if you don't amend this, the future legal uh, professionals, they can uh, find the minutes of this meeting and understand the logic. Because my understanding is not, well, adverse and inclement, I thought it was the same. Black, black rainstorm and typhoon, uh, one was just uh, the old legislation, one was the dealing with the um, amendments. But we shouldn't have two separate terms to talk about the same thing. Is Ms. Sidho's understanding correct? Adverse are a general description, and inclement are not exactly the same. You have to refer to the provisions. A uh, legal advisor, could you help us? We have existing legislation, for example, in Schedule 2 of the regulations, there's a provision saying under certain weather conditions, uh, the uh, counting and polling can be postponed but they don't use adverse weather warning or uh, black rainstorm or uh, typhoon. They refer to typhoon or other adverse weather. So typhoon uh, cannot be linked to gale warning and uh, inclement weather. So I understand why uh, Mr. Mo would have to use uh, adverse weather descriptions. I agree that, uh, as our legal advisor said in Schedule 2, uh, it has, uh, voting has to be postponed because of typhoon. And then here we have gale warning, black rainstorm warning, and so on. But So we can all find the references to that. But when you mention adverse weather, I have uh, questions. So when you say adverse weather, isn't that a wider scope? For example, today, 
uh, could be very hot. Is that also adverse weather? Well, I have two suggestions. We have, if we feel confused, so in order to prevent future uh, controversy, can we standardize the terms? Could you say that uh, adverse weather and uh, inclement weather warning day or gale warning? We have gale warning has the same meaning as in the judicial proceedings ordinance. Could you clarify it, Mr. Mo? If it's standardized, uh, it creates more confusion because uh, we have a clear uh, definition of inclement weather working day, uh, where we refer to Cap 62, uh, the typhoon gale warning. I'll give you an example. In Schedule 2, uh, Item 2, uh, counting can be postponed because of typhoon or other adverse weather. Well, counting could be uh, just a, within a district. They might have heavy rainfall in one district. They might have thunderstorm, hail, but it's not territory-wide it didn't lead to a black rainstorm warning but locally in the district because of that condition they have to exercise postponement that's what I'm saying uh, a specific provision regarding adverse weather so we need to retain uh, the effects uh, to not be affected by general provisions. So adverse weather is a, descrip is a description uh, and in Schedule 2 uh, it is clear. So when we, draft when we did drafting we avoided the inclement weather warning to think that uh, we were following that definition that it has to be a black rainstorm or Typhoon 8. Well, after hearing the official, should the, it's a matter of uh, choice. Should we retain inclement weather or other description? Because we have a definition of adverse weather. So, in some areas, uh, we could have some flexibility. Legal advisor? Well, members could consider uh, in Clause 4, it has not clearly pointed out the specific provision being Schedule 2. So this drafting has an advantage that if there is new legislation to deal with weather, then we don't need to amend Clause 4. Another way of handling it is rather than describing this, uh, we could point out the specific. Uh, rather than saying subsections 2 and 3 are subject to any specific provision relating to transaction of business during bad weather in this regulation. then we wouldn't have this doubt. Well, more. As it's already 12 o'clock, I can only uh, extend the meeting time by 15 minutes, but I don't think we need to do that because um, we'll have another chance to discuss um, this um, um, matter. So uh, next time, let's start um, from this um, subsection. And let's um, 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 uh, so study the uh, legal advisor's proposal. So, Ms. Ho, I think we should bookmark this um, part. 
uh, want the drafting division to um, think about this because uh, our greatest worry is that there may be some confusion, and we also want to have a clear definition as to what is meant by adverse um, um, weather. And um, and just now, uh, Mr. Mo said that. The, um, um, uh, it might be, not be a territory-wide problem, and and I thank Ms. En Cheng for um raise uh, for um uh, raising the issue or the scenario of um uh, extremely hot weather because in future, I say um if um uh, it's very hot or if um the air pollution index is very high, the government may advise people against going out. All right, so let's continue our discussion next time. All right. And can the bureau um, uh, give us uh, written um, re uh, uh, replies uh, in relation to concerns expressed today? Right. Our next meeting will be held on the third of June at ten forty-five a.m. So we'll continue our meeting next Tuesday. And we will um, start from page nine, right? So thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.